Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It is August 8th. Lisa, Lydia, Scott here on this Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. Before we jump into our news and weather headlines, we have air quality concerns mm -hmm. we want to talk about today. I want to remind you, of course, you can watch us anytime after we're done on your Facebook feed, but we also make it into a podcast. You can go to inforum.com slash podcasts and look for the Inform Minute or anywhere you find your podcasts. We're also on our Inform YouTube channel and, of course, live. Wake up with us every weekday morning on WDAY from 5 to 7. That's right. All right, let's jump into the big story of the day. Yeah. It is so hazy out yeah. there. We're looking at all four of your tower cams this morning, so yeah. it's not like just in one spot. No, it is spread mm. across all of us. We're all waking up in a haze this morning. It's <laughs> just kind of icky outside. Yeah. I got a report down in Wapton said they could smell it, so it yeah. is enough to reduce visibility in some spots and then certainly reduce air quality. Um, our air quality index has been in the 90s all morning long, which is technically in the moderate category for your air quality, but 100 is when you get into that unhealthy category. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we're right teetering there. right on the edge of yeah. being in the unhealthy category. If you do spend a lot of time outside today, just listen to your body. If your throat starts getting a little scratchy, if it's getting a little bit harder to breathe, good idea just to take a break in some filtered air, in some air conditioning later today, which AC will feel pretty good because we're going to boost the temperature up to 85 this afternoon pretty warm day yeah. Yeah. yeah if we didn't have smoke we could probably get a little bit warmer oh, than that yeah. but that'll kind of block some of the sun and keep us just that smidge cooler um a little bit of a breeze out of the west about 10 to 20 miles an hour um, and then a cold front is moving through so when you bring a cold front into that warm air in the afternoon in the evening that'll cause some thunder showers mm. thunderstorms even I think some hail and some gusty winds would be your primary threats with any of those cells that do get stronger. Um, the Storm Prediction Center actually did just come out at 8 a.m. with a level one risk for severe weather for uh -oh. us today. So okay. that's breaking news yeah. for you. Yeah. That just happened. Um, so some of these storms could get a little bit stronger. Again, I think marginal hail, marginal wind would be your primary threats. Just watch out for some of those later today. Uh, they'll work their way down to the south and then they're out of here by about sunset tonight. I'll leave a spotty rain chance in for tomorrow, something like a maybe 10 to 20% chance of rain. So small chance, uh, most of us not seeing anything tomorrow. Better chance of rain comes actually throughout the day on Thursday, kind of a big low moving in. That's that big widespread rain um, moves from the west to the east. So starts out near the North Dakota, Montana border and then marches to the east okay. throughout the day on Thursday, probably getting to us in the second half of the day. We're still a few days away, so timing, threats, all those details, how much rain, all of that's still a little bit questionable at this point, but that'll come to focus as we get into tomorrow, as we get a little okay. bit closer to that. So decent shot of rain on Thursday. Otherwise, temperatures are just kind of all over the 70s and the 80s on your 10-day forecast. Pretty August-like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I, I think that's it. You I think that it. covered everything. <laughs> I was just going to say, and you talked about this a lot on First News, and you posted something to your Facebook page, which yeah. is kind of nice, too, if you want to see the levels yes. of the air quality. I really like the graphics that you use. Thanks. If you kind of want to... Yeah understand especially when she's saying you know like 90 to 100 you can see what does the that color. all mean yes yeah mm -hmm. so you can check that out on her facebook page as well you can kind of understand why you're seeing and smelling yes it too. yes it kind of breaks down the different categories of the air quality and what that means for your body and if you have if you're one of the sensitive people if you have lung issues or respiratory issues or even heart issues or some to people even really bad allergies um what that kind of means for your body and to pay attention to that number that air quality index so yeah you yeah. make it understandable because it can be kind of a well, little thanks but yeah. i try <laughs> it's a lot it's a lot yeah. you, you just know it's hazy but you don't fully yeah. understand it, so it's good what's stuff. actually getting into your lungs exactly yeah so check no that doctor out. but all right I no. try. <laughs> thank thanks, you dr guys. bloom <laughs> hot and hazy interesting combo <laughs> yeah all right let's jump into some of our news headlines this morning this is some interesting stuff here new this morning uh, we now know how many calls the Becker County Sheriff's Office responded to at WeFest. Uh, during that three-day festival, deputies were sent out 346 times. That's wow. a little more than half of all the dispatch calls that they received in the entire county last weekend. The most common call was for underage drinking. More than 200 minors were cited for drinking at the festival. Uh, we kind of combed over those logs, dug into them a little bit. Um, they covered everything from garbage fires to sexual assault in that three-day window. Uh, there were 17 deputies on site every day at the festival. That's a lot. State Patrol and WeFest security members also, but we're talking about tens of thousands of people there yeah. uh, every day as well. So, you know, the numbers, although they seem big, probably the percentage-wise of how many people were there, yeah. not so big. Good to always have the law enforcement around to Absolutely. take care of things that need to be taken care of, though. All right, uh, the Grand Forks Air Force Base is going to be home to an important new facility 
Space Development Agency will be building a satellite test and checkout center at the base. It's gonna be 25,000 square feet. It's gonna be supporting Space Development Agency's low earth orbit satellite mission. And $30 million has been secured for the construction of this facility and then two other operation centers, including one that will also be on that Air Force base. That's expected to be completed in 2026. Uh, this is a case we've been tracking for quite some time for you. We have an update. Uh, today, the case for a man accused in a deadly drive-by shooting. Well, that case is now moving to federal court and his next hearing this afternoon. Uh, as we first reported for you, 41-year-old uh, Santino Marial was shot and killed back in August of 2020. According to court documents that we now have, police believe Marial was actually the wrong target. Fast forward two years, police arrested Jesse Burnett for pulling the trigger. Court documents show another man who pleaded guilty to being an accomplice in that murder gave Burnett up to police. Um, recently unsealed federal court documents show Burnett found, found out that a witness snitched uh, and planned an attack on that person in jail. Uh, the documents go on to say that Daniel Cisse worked with Burnett to attack that witness, beating him up and stabbing him with a pencil. So lots of details. Yeah. We're learning a lot of new information, a lot of people involved. It's hearing in federal court at three this afternoon. And of course, we're going to have a, a WDAY crew there and we'll update you on our evening newscasts. All right, Fargo Mayor Tim Mahoney's 2024 preliminary budget plan for the city has cleared another hurdle this morning. First News had updated numbers for you on how much more you might actually be paying the city with this whole thing. Uh, the budget was passed by a four to one vote at last night's city commission meeting. The city plans to raise property taxes and utility fees. That will generate an additional $11.3 million in city tax revenue. Now, that still leaves the city with about a $6.6 .6 million budget deficit. However, in case you didn't know, the city actually operated with deficits of at least $7 million in the past two years. The final budget won't be approved until October. Now, from here, that budget information heads to Cass County, and the county has until August 31st to notify property owners about those tax increases. Uh, so to put it into perspective, a single family home would see a $120 tax increase for utility and public service fees. And then also there would be a $25 property tax increase for a $275,000 home. Uh, a lot of details on the budget, of course, so you can read more about that. What's all in it right now on inforum.com. And while there, you might want to check out this video if you haven't watched it already. If you didn't see it on your Facebook feed. This morning, Officer Tyler Haas is waking up at home for the first time. Yeah. Uh, of course, since that deadly Fargo sh shooting that happened more than three weeks ago. Haas was released from Sanford Health yesterday. Uh, the video, once again, just incredible. The halls lined, mm -hmm. you know, all the way up, yeah. you know, up and down, um, you know, standing ovation, applause, uh, just showing the incredible support. So uh, you can check out that video of him walking out. And yeah. so second officer then to be released so everyone's mm -hmm. out but still long road to recovery yeah, we keep saying that but it's therapy all that kind of stuff but going the right direction get out of the hospital, hospital is a special thing step. for them so. absolutely all right uh today you can enjoy a nice cold lemonade some cupcakes all while making dreams come true addy's royal cupcake stand will be open today from 3 to 5 30 uh, at the first international bank and trust parking lot that's just off of 37th avenue south in moorhead you can get a sweet treat. Also spend some time with your favorite princesses. Uh, the teams are also delivering more than a thousand cupcakes throughout the FM area today for the cause. Uh, all the proceeds from these uh, sales of these cupcakes, the lemonades, everything that's going on, it goes to the Sunshine Foundation, which is a nonprofit that helps fulfill the wishes of kids struggling with chronic illnesses. It's such a fun event. Stop by, say hi, say hi to Addie, see all the princesses yeah. and enjoy some awesome cupcakes. Another big story today, former Vice President Mike Pence has now reached the donor threshold to qualify for the first Republican presidential debate. The Republican National Committee set a requirement of at least 40,000 unique donors to qualify. Mm -hmm. So that's in addition to polling requirements and a commitment to support the eventual GOP nominee. Pence had already met the polling criteria. Uh, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum, as we have reported to you, just recently passed the donor threshold as well, so he'll take part. Mm -hmm. And we do know, of course, we had video, he visited National Guard troops at the Mexico border, just like we previewed for you yesterday on First News, that happened. And now all eyes are on that big debate that's going to happen a little later this month in Milwaukee. That's right. All right, 
Hot Mike with Tom Izzo. You can watch it today from 9 to 11 this morning on WDNY Extra and Inform.com. A lot of good stuff going on, of course, on the show, like always. Uh, one of NDSU's defensive standouts is back on the field after missing nearly all of last season. Uh, Dom will be chatting with him. Plus, the season opener is just three weeks away from Minnesota as they welcome in rival Nebraska. He'll be talking about how the Huskers are prepping for the game in the Twin Cities. Uh, and remember, right now is a great time to get your subscription to an inform.com all access pass. 99 mm -hmm. cents a month for your first three months. Just go to inform.com slash subscribe to check it out. And remember to join us for our newscast the rest of the day as well. Next one at 11 o'clock this morning, then this afternoon, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. We'll be back for first news tomorrow morning from 5 to 7. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.